Hey bike farmers, um, I'm going to try to do one a little bit quicker today for you. This is a nice uh, entry level Schwinn mountain bike, I guess. I don't know, I'd put it more in the ATB category, all terrain bicycle, general purpose all arounder is what I like to call it. Upright handlebars, somewhat comfy saddle, some sort of, I mean they're mountain bikey tires with a nice center ridge on the tire so good for riding around town but you get out on the gravel trails or even in the woods a little bit kid can have a lot of fun on this bike just good good old bike um i believe this one was probably born in a target or maybe a dick sporting goods or something like that so i want to make sure that everything's in its right place and has been assembled properly otherwise it's in very not very ridden very not very ridden condition so a little bit of lube a little bit of love a tweak here and there and this one's going to be good to go um, the rear tire needs some truing and uh, i'm going to try to speed through this one and give you a shorter episode today thank you all right per the huge first thing i like to do is take some grease on a brush get some grease down there in the seat tube and Try to prevent that from rusting together. You know, if somebody puts it in their backyard, um, backyard shed somewhere where it's not kept dry, it's going to rust solid. I like to drop a little tri flow on the quick release mechanism. And then I always give myself enough room to clamp it in the stand. First thing I'm seeing here is this chain is kind of rusty. It's very dry. I'm just going to take some one step cleaner and just douse it. Just kind of hit both derailleurs. I always squirt some on the pedal axle, squirt some in the brake pivots. This one step. By finish line is a, a real thin lube, and I so far I've um, I've always had great results with it. Taking some tri flow here and dropping it in the water bottle holes, water bottle holes, no water bottle bolt heads. Um, if you're real persnickety, you can take those off and hit them with a wire brush. But just dropping some tri flow in where water is going to collect anywhere on the bike um, really keeps rust at bay up here in the handlebars behind your brake levers and you can use the one step here too um, this bike's pretty clean drop some in here so one step is really clean and thin and kind of works its way in tri flow is a little bit slightly thicker but i think it leaves a more of a teflon coating around whatever you're squirting it on so it's got a little more longevity to it all right, let's pop this rear wheel off, disconnect the brake, put it in the high gear, taking a look at things. Um, it is not quick release, so we're gonna grab our 15 millimeter wrench, loosen up the axle nuts. Pop that rear wheel out. Yeah, look at that. It's still got some pack original packaging on it. That did not end up in the garbage can. All right, we're going to set that wheel aside. I'm just going to go ahead and pop the front one off too. And I suppose now's a good time to clean the bike. And I need a rag. Okay, so got a nice cleanish rag here because it's a cleanish bike and it almost looks like it got hit with some spray paint or no, I guess it's just sparkles in front. Anyway, the cheap furniture spray, this is my favorite stuff. Makes for a great, great bike polish. 
You can buy a pledge or something that's more expensive. It's not so bad on Amazon if you get cases of it. I've done that in the past. However, this stuff's a little bit thinner and I think it's a better cleaner. Um, pledge is a little bit thicker, waxy film that leaves behind. It does a great job, but this does a really good job too. And it's thinner and, you know, really kind of has a scrubbing cleaning power to it. So anyway, you saw, I just sprayed it all over the bike and now I'm just going to go through and wipe it off. I do a lot of this flossing technique on the tubes. It really scrubs quickly. Another thing I want to do with this bike is this whole area here is kind of sun faded. Um, it's not real shiny or glossy. So while we're getting started here, I just squirt this on there and I let it sit. I don't touch it. It'll soak in as we do the rest of the tune up. And then at the end, we can polish it off and it'll stay nice and shiny. It's a good way to revive things. It's kind of like an armor all of sorts. Okay, let's uh, let's do that. Let's do the wheels. Pretty low end wheel. It's a free wheel. That's working great. Solid axle, which is a nice thing for these low end bikes because the kids really kind of abuse them, take them off some sweet jumps, that sort of deal. And you can hear that that wobble. So we're going to get that out of there. And the way I do that, so right now it's rubbing on this side of the rim. So the spokes that connect to this side of the hub, I'm going to tighten right at that spot. Same thing at this spot. And I'll do that and I just get it to stop rubbing and then I make a little adjustment. Get it to rub again. Tighten just a little bit, turning like a half a turn on these, sometimes a quarter turn. And I'm tightening just because I know it's a cheap wheel and probably needs to add tension. You can really get into the weeds with wheels. You know, if this was a high end bike, a race bike, I'd be exercising more technical expertise here, but we're just trying to get this to not rub on the brakes, essentially. So I'm also loosening the spokes on this side. So I go around and I do this side of the wheel until I'm satisfied. getting there. Quarter turn at a time. Whoop. I thought I was there. Man, I keep thinking I'm there and I'm not. All right. And then I uh, prop one side of the stand op open with another tool. Sometimes it's an old spoke or a screwdriver. Or in this case, it's a punch. 
maybe an awl. And then I just kind of true up on this side of the rim. And pretty soon here I'm going to call it good enough. I've heard that saying good enough expanded recently to good enough for who it's for, which is a little condescending, but man, I like it because it applies often. It often applies. This wheel's got some good filth built up on it. So I'm using some Dawn Power Wash. This you can get at Costco, which is pretty sweet. It is re-upped the other day. It's like washing the dishes. It's a good degreaser. Dawn dish soap is magic in many cases. I know you can't see what I'm doing over here, but it's just a lot of manual cleaning. Squirt, squirt, rub, rub. Squirt, squirt, rub, rub. That's how it goes. Just putting the rag on my finger like this and going between each of the spoke nipples right on the rim. This thing is cleaning right up. And then I always, now that the rag is damp, and go through and give each spoke a little polish. It really brings things to life. Shiny. Shiny things sell better. So I, I resell these bikes at my bike shop here in southern Wisconsin. I don't deal with fancy bikes very often. I like regular bikes for regular people. I find them easier to work on, which isn't always the case, but I'm good at it. And I do all the things that make a lot of sense to me. I don't do a lot of the things that make a lot of sense to other people. But if there's something that I'm overlooking, and you do this too, make a comment. Let me know. I like to learn things. I think this is good. Good enough for who it's for. And then while I'm in wheel mode, I just do the front wheel. And it's the same, same darn thing. Get it up in the stand, give it a quick true. This one's in much better shape, but still off. Squirt, squirt, and a wipe, wipe.
All right. I'm gonna show you what I consider to be the easiest way to lube every cable on your bike. What you can do, grab the front derailleur and pull it towards you. Pull this housing out of its stops. Then push this derailleur out. Pull the housing out of its stops. All the way. Grab your bottle of TriFlow. And put some TriFlow up there. And then some in the middle. And move it around with your fingers. A little more TriFlow here. And then this one is especially important. One of the quickest improvements you can make to any bike is lubing this little loop back here. And then, don't get it all mixed up. It's not that hard to undo. Okay, so the rear one's done. Then you can do the front. Front derail your cable. Looks like it wants to go over. Rear brake cable. Oh, this barrel adjuster is turned out. So I'm going to turn it all the way in. And we're going to adjust it all the way in. Yeah, this one's corroded. To be expected. They don't come with any lube from the factory. And, you know, the kid at Dick's or Target that assembled this bike probably didn't take the time to lube the cable at assembly. Most bike shops don't, frankly. Some do. I do. Well, I should say I did before everything was... Everything became a sealed system. You know, now it's just housing all the way back on most bikes. And those are nicer cables. A lot of them are coated and uh, really nice housing. I can see right now that that front derailleur cable is loose. So I'm just going to grab the bottom of it with my needle nose. Loosen the anchor bolt. A lot of this stuff, on my longer videos, you'll see how it actually works if you're really curious. But this one, I'm just trying to get you a quick one to show you my process and maybe you pick up some tips along the way. Okay. We know the rear wheel is all good because we just did it. So let's get it on. The bike. So I did grease the threads on these axle nuts. I just don't have to be that afraid of stripping them. It's pretty rare to strip one. I don't know if I've ever stripped one, actually. Um, I do a quick check of that brake cable to make sure everything's moving freely. This one feels excellent. There are so many things that I do by feel that I wish I could, that I wish translated to these videos. So I'll just do my best to kind of explain. So the cable feels great. The brake is a little bit loose. So I'm gonna loosen the anchor. And we know it's loose because, you know, the barrel adjuster was way out on that lever and I tightened it down so that loosened the cable. That doesn't make any sense. Barrel adjusters are kind of backwards. Loosening the adjuster tightens the cable. I talk about that more in the longer videos as well. So the channel's pretty new and I really appreciate people watching. I'm very grateful for my viewers. The few that I've had so far. I really appreciate the comments I've been getting. Some encouragement, some constructive 
great I say so. I like it all. Anyway, I want this channel to be successful. This is what I want to do in the winter. So what I need from you is for you to like this video right now. Even if you don't like it, like it. Subscribe to the channel, please. And click the notification bell. You know the drill. Because that'll tell you when I upload. I'm going to try to get on a regular thing, but it hasn't really been panning out for me. I'm pretty busy with my bike shop. And, um, and my mobile bike, bike business. Both things I will... Uh, be posting videos about so you can learn a little bit about that too so that's why it's important to be notified in the new videos so I just made a couple tweaks on those brake pads got the cable lube got it adjusted right um, here's a fun trick so this lever is a little loose you do that crank them down now it's stuck open or closed or whatever. Back it up until it moves. Back it up until it moves freely. That's as good as it's ever going to get. Could do it on this side too. Now I've already lib lubed the pivots. So, oh yeah, we didn't lube this cable. So this one I just kind of pull down as hard as I can. And I let gravity suck lube down into the housing and then I do the same with the noodle lube and noodles tighten that down back it off a little uh oh ah it rounded out. Somebody else was in there at some point. I wasn't being very careful. I'm going to grab a little better wrench here. Oh, yeah. All right. Okay, that should be good enough. We can make a, make a tweak when we get that front wheel on. Drive train. Okay. That cable's on. You know, need to be trimmed. Something's flippity flappity back here. All right. Take a closer look at that from behind. Looks like something's a little bent. Something's a little wonky. Maybe loose. Yep, look at that. That was loose. The derailleur is very loose. Tighten that down, see what happens. Oh, fixed. So it's wanting to overshift. Yep, see? Um, so the barrel adjuster up here on the shift lever that I just turned in a quarter turn, which won't be enough. I'm gonna turn this barrel adjuster in. That was about a turn. Crank through it a couple times, just force things. And then, this is always a favorite trick. Cable too tight, grab your derailleur, get a good grip on it. And then grab your cable. Just pull. Sometimes if you pull up on the top tube, oh, I just broke something. Shit. All right. Don't listen to me, guys. I'll show you what I did here. Don't pull too hard. Anyway, the idea is, is that you can just stretch the cable a fraction of a millimeter to get it shifting just perfectly. It works most of the time, but you do run the risk of popping through a ferrule. This is a ferrule. Anyway, you can see here what I've done. See how the housing is poking out of the ferrule? So we'll take the ferrule off. I'm just going to trim 
the very end of the housing, make it nice and nice and clean. I grab a new ferrule, a better ferrule. And I might as well check these other ones. Oh yeah, this one's about to go. So this is where you can really get into the weeds. It's like, well, if these are bad, then they're all bad, right? So why wouldn't you do them all? It's like, well, on this bike, knowing where it's going, it's probably going to be a real casual rider kid. It's only going to have it for a year or two before it's touched again, likely by myself. I'm just going to leave it because I'm responsible for it anyway. Okay. So I get those little pieces of housing back in place with some fresh ferulis. Uh oh. You got to be careful that you don't fray your cable. Reusing cables like this sometimes you gotta sometimes you gotta be careful yeah there we go it's always good to be careful right it's always good to take risks both things are true the duality of man Human experience is a paradox in itself. It's a beautiful paradox. All right. Man, that's pretty good. So I think that's just a little bit tight. And I also think that the high limit, which is this bottom screw, is just in a little bit. So I'm going to back this out a smidge. And then I'm going to loosen the cable and I'm going to pick up the slack with the barrel adjusters and that gives this whole system some adjustability. So you can turn lefty loosen will tighten the cable. So I just pulled the slack out with a turn. And a little bit more. I like it. I like it a lot. Good to go there. This still has the little setup sticker on it. Take that off. We tighten that cable before manually, and it's a friction system so I can pull some slack out with the barrel adjuster on the lever. There's no barrel adjuster down here on the front derailleurs. It's only on the lever and the grip shifter. So it's, I say it's friction. I mean, it's ratcheted. So you just pull it until it moves it into the middle ring and then you pull it until it moves it. So really what you're doing here is you're checking the high limit and the low limit. High limit low limit. Everything's working great up front. Everything's lubricated. I'm moving on. It's all smudgy. Everything's smudgy. Give her a little wipe.
clean up the fork a little bit. Lube up that quick release. Oh, hi. Reconnect the front brake. front of the bike. This brake is got pretty good tension, pretty even tension. But it feels a little loose. And it's looser than the rear. I like them to be the same. This bike was actually assembled pretty good. It could have been born in a bike shop. But I think this is a select series and the signature series are the bike shop Schwinn's from this era. Schwinn's a tricky brand, man. They've had a long history. They've got some great, some of the best bikes ever built and some real garbage out there. This one's right in between. Not bad, not great. Good enough for who it's for. Eh, I'm not gonna trim that. It can be tucked. Tucked away for safekeeping. Back one too. isn't as cooperative. There we go. Sure I'm squeezing those levers a lot. I'm gonna pop this little dust cap off the stem that you cannot see, but I promise you, I swear to God it's there. Just a little rubber dust cap. Like that. Kind of keeps rust at bay. Do my little tri-flow tri trick. Grab my six mil. Oh. Stem height is too high. The stems are marked for a minimum insertion. Well, if I'm going to loosen it, we should grease it. In, we should grease it anyway. You don't want a stem getting stuck either. This bike has not had a hard life. It's been 
in an attached garage since day one. I guarantee it. So, I'm kind of leaning over it here and using my knee to support the wheel as I turn the handlebars to get things just exactly perfect. I always double check that at the end with my final bike check on the floor. Put the cap back. We're good to go. Um, this is a headset wrench, 36 millimeter, 32 millimeter. This is a 36 millimeter headset, inch and an eighth. First thing I do is I take the adjuster cup and I back it off. I check to make sure it's not too loose. Then I do what everybody does, and that's you put the wrench on, don't get purchased, and then it flies right off. Real mechanic. It doesn't happen to real mechanics. There we go. And that's probably because my, my wrench is getting old. It's a little marred up. But you want to lock these two nuts together. Another way to do it, if you have the wrenches, which I don't in front of me. The right way to do it is with two wrenches and you support the bottom one and grab the top one and then tighten them together. You want it loose enough so everything moves freely, tight enough where nothing wobbles. Pound those grips on, check the front reflector. A little bit of rust on these water bottle screws. You can carefully knock it off with a wire brush. Without scratching the frame. Like I said, if you really want to go to town, you can take them off, hit them with a wire brush, clean them up, lube them, put them back. It's been done. But doesn't matter on this bike. Probably end up putting a water bottle cage on it anyway. The kids really like that. Good way to make a quick eight bucks. And I think that if they're going to be out riding around, they should bring some water with them or something to drink at least. Look at that, folks. That's about all there is to it. Uh, I can check the seat. Check the saddle. This is usually 13. This looks like a 14 though. It's usually 13 or 14. Doesn't matter a whole lot which side you tighten, but I usually do both. Even the saddle's in good shape. These always the saddles are ripped because the kids just dump them. All right, we've got the bike on the ground for the final check. Check the angle of my handlebars and levers. I'm gonna put the handlebars up a little bit. The levers will likely be in a better position then. I don't wanna go too far up. This is one of those things where I go by feel with the handlebars, but the levers, I like them to be even and at about 30 degrees is how I think of it. That's satisfactory. I have not put air in these tires. We need to do that. Well, I'll do that before I settle things. I'm looking at the stem here and everything's aligned. I did a good job there. Yeah. There's not anything more I can do here. Well, I'm sure there's things I can do, but nothing I have to do. You know, I start most videos by putting air in the tires. Start most bikes by putting air in the tires. Ooh, it's making noises. I'm gonna stop. <laughs> Don't like it when they make noises. 
So, as I'm finishing up down here, I'll finish up the video. Thank you again for tuning in and watching all the way to the end. It's fantastic. Don't forget to hit the like button. Ring that bell. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Thank you, bike farmers. We'll see you next time.